Right. So we're looking at um, search today in Bubble um, and just see the different types of search that are available to you and uh, how good they are uh, or not, as the case may be. So let's just have a look at that. So I've uh, got a bank page here and we're going to add a standard search box to this. Um, so we get into input forms and we grab the search box and put it on. So this is a built in bubble element that comes as standard. Um, we've got dynamic choices and it allows us to go and, and specify which table or data type uh, in the database that we want to search for. So in this case, let's just search for user. We can put some constraints in here, but um, let's search for full name. Now you'll notice that with the standard search box, I can literally search one data field. So if I wanted to search across all of these data fields, like for first name or last name or something in there, uh, user's description, I can't. Uh, not using this technique anyway, I can only ask um, for a single data field. So in this case, I'm gonna search for full name. Um, okay, and it's as simple as that. And the built-in functionality, if we just refresh this screen, the built-in functionality um, of that search box actually lists any matches that it gets. So let's have a look. Um, so if we, we've got a few users in here, you can see that it appears down below and when I click it, it would select it and I could use that selection to drive um, a workflow, for example. I've also got uh, Angelina in here, etc. no problems at all. So let's just um, make this a little bit harder for Bubble. Let's switch this now and let's change this to uh, movies table. And I've got about 7,000 movies in here uh, in, the, in the database. Um, so let's search for movie name and let's see the effect on that. So let's search for, I don't know, Top Gun. And you can see pretty quick, not bad at all actually. You can see I've got lots of movies in here. I don't know what else is in here, but there you go. Um, Lots of movies in it, so that, that works fine. Let's suppose though that we want to um, do more of a fuzzy search across multiple fields in a particular data type, um, which is kind of your usual case. So we can't do that with any of the built-in um, tools or not easily, we could do it with a repeating group and some complicated search, um, filtered search mechanisms. Uh, the challenge with that is around performance. So let's look at what else is available to us. So we should delete this. Well, we've got some plugins that we could use um, and I've installed this one called Search and Autocorrect. There is another one from Zero Code um, called I think Fuzzy Search or something like that, which is almost identical to be honest. It does a very similar thing. So I've installed this. So we can go grab that plugin. Um, let's find it. It's called Search and Autocorrect. Let's just drop it. It drops us a little element in here. Now this has to work in combination with a bunch of other elements. On its own, it doesn't really do anything. You need to have an input box and then have somewhere to put your output um, for any matches that it finds. But let's set this up first. So let's firstly let's do user. Um, so I'm going to do a search in the in the database for users, no constraints. And you'll notice that this allows me to search multiple fields now. So I can search um, across multiple fields in that same data type. Um, it's asking me for the ID of the input box. I'll tick that box. Um, and I'm going to use tokenize. Uh, I'm not going to find all matches. Uh, and there's a bunch of parameters in there that you can use to um, hone your results or filter your results out. So you get either you get better results or wider results or tighter results. So let's have a look. Well, now we need an output for this. So let's put a repeating group below here. Uh, let's make that one. Let's make it an extended vertical scroller. And we're looking at users. And our data source is going to be this um, auto search and autocorrect A's matches. So when it matches, um, it's going to take the input from our search box, uh, which we haven't added, which we will in a minute. Um, it's going to take the input from our search box. It's going to run it through its little algorithm to figure out which of these uh, things it gets a match for. And then we're going to output the results into this repeating group. So let's do that. And we want to show the current user's full name there. Now let's give it an input box so that we've got something we can type into. Let's find that input box. Here we go. And we'll call this search. 
And down the bottom here, I've got this ID attribute, and I'm going to call it search box. Oops, search box there. And that needs to match what I typed in here, which it does search box. Good. So when we type in here, uh, this little plugin should do its work, and the results should be fed out here. So let's have a see. So I'm going to type, and as you can see, as I'm starting to type, it's finding um, individual users. And I can make that match so that when I've typed Jackie Chan, the only person I see is Jackie Chan by just closing down that match. Um, actually, I can do that by changing this score here and saying, I want you to be a bit tighter. Let's see if that makes enough difference. Not enough, but maybe some more. But I could also, because it's searching the description, I know that martial arts is going to be in Jackie Chan's description. And therefore, I'm searching the description of that particular user as well. And it's coming up with Jackie Chan. And then I could click this. And because that's in a repeating group, I could use that to run a workflow. Great. No problems there. Um, what happens, though, if we point this now at that bigger movies table? So as I said, this movie table has got... Um, 7,000 plus nearly 8,000 entries. So let's search the movie name and let's search the description. Let's turn that one off. Those are the only two ones worth searching. The rest of the stuff can say the same. Great. Okay. Just need to change this data type in the repeating group output to be movies. There we go. Now it matches. And let's just change this to show the movie name. So same principle, we're just looking at that much larger table now. Let's see what impact we have now. Okay, so I'm going to search for Top Gun because I happen to know that's in there. And now we wait. And, and this is the this is the challenge with Bubble. The, the fuzzy search works great. Um, and the normal search works great with relatively small data sets. I mean, as you saw, the default search from Bubble worked fine with the larger data sets of movies. I was able to search for Top Gun and it found it great, but I was only searching a single field. Now, the fuzzy search is only really searching two fields. Now, it says the movie name and the description, but you can see like nothing's coming back. And um, we've been seconds and seconds now. It will eventually, or Bubble or Time Out, one or the other, something will happen. Um, but when you've got a large data set, even fuzzy search isn't going to work for you. So, um, in our next uh, video, we're going to look at Algolia which is a third party API that you can plug in and bubble supports um, natively, or at least to a certain degree, um, that will allow us to do much more powerful search, uh, but also much quicker search and searches when you get to this kind of volume. Um, when you're into the thousands of records, then the kind of uh, fuzzy search, et cetera, is not going to work for you. So uh, come back and have a look at the, uh, the Algolia video.